everybody welcome back it's bc here with give me signs where we take your design to your client's hands with your brand so we're going to be doing another design and sublimation video today today we are going to be working on custom dog socks so i'm sure you've seen these ads come through facebook possibly on instagram or tiktok wherever you're at and people are doing uh, sublimated socks with uh people's dogs all over them on a design, like a template. So these are pretty popular. Um, they've been around for a little while, but um, I just thought, hey, let's show them how they can actually do this on their own with Photoshop. And uh, we're gonna hop in there here in a second and do that. Before we do, if you guys have been liking the content, please like and subscribe. Always helps me, helps the channel grow. The channel has been growing. We're almost at a thousand subscribers now, guys, which is very exciting. And as soon as we do, we are gonna do another giveaway. So stay tuned for that when we get closer. Um, also, we have Heat Press Creators. That is our group at Facebook. Please head on over there and join up. Uh, we usually post most of the videos over there and you can post your own work as well. So if you're following along, please post the stuff that you're doing. It's always good to see the type of stuff that you are actually making. So anyway, so what we're gonna be doing is going to Photoshop and you are gonna be seeing what this is gonna look like. They're gonna end up looking like this. So these are the custom dog socks we're making today, guys. Um, as you can see, um, I will show you how to also load them onto a sock jig. Now we're gonna be using a sock jig that's made out of wood. I did these myself. Um, they are 4.25, that is four and a quarter width inches. And I think I made them 18 inches long. You can make them longer if you want. Um, but that worked out great uh, to work with my press. So, um, I also use an Epson 2720, which is using uh, 18 by 14 sublimation paper. So that is legal size. So because of that, there will be a little bit of a white bit on the toe, which actually looks fine to me. As you can see, I don't mind it. Actually, I think it looks good on the sock, to be quite honest. And if you want, sometimes what I do is also make another sublimated part and then I do another pressing down here with just the logo, or I just add another cutted piece that just has the logo of the brand that I'm uh, printing for. So anyway, let's on hop on over to Photoshop. Let's show you how to do this. So first, we're gonna show you how to set up the template. We're gonna also show you how to connect the template so that, let's say you have more orders coming in, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to update one thing and it's gonna update the whole design and all the different faces. So stay tuned, we're gonna hop into it now. All right, guys, so let's get right into it. We are going to be making us a sock template that we are going to be printing out and we're gonna sublimate the socks. So we're gonna go through the whole thing. So um, first thing we wanna do is create a new document. So go up to file here and then go new. It's gonna bring this window up right here, guys. Um, what we're gonna do is actually, uh, I already have a preset saved one. Um, if you don't know how to save a template, I'll go over that really quick. First, change this to inches. Uh, for the sock, I usually do my socks uh, individual. Instead of doing two up, I usually do one up and wrap it around. I tend to get better results that way. So um, the width will be 4.5 inches and the height is going to be 13.75. Now the reason it's 13.75 guys, I use legal size sublimation uh, paper, which is eight and a half by 14. Um, and this will give me the coverage of the full sheet. Um, and this will leave a little bit of a white toe on the sock, but I actually like that personally. I think it looks fine, it actually works fine. And I, sometimes I'll even add another little logo in the white area, but that's for another uh, video. For this, this is very simple, guys. Four and a half inches wide, 13.75 on the height. We want the resolution to be 300 and make sure that's pixels per inch. For the color mode, make sure this is at CMYK, all right? That is gonna give us our color space to print on. That seems to be going uh, pretty good. Um, now we want to probably save this as just a preset. So what I would suggest is click this button right here um, and it'll allow you to name it. And you can name it like a single sub sock, okay? All right, and then when you hit save preset, it saves it under this tab, the save tab, and there is the preset. So we can just 
click and create and it automatically opens up okay so there it is there's our uh blank canvas guys the first thing before we even get going if you don't see these rulers here what you can do is hit control and r and that will toggle those on and off um leave them on for right now and then from the side just grab the actual side and a guide will automatically pop out slowly move it until it snaps you'll see it snap right into the middle so this we know is the middle of the design area all right now another thing we're going to do is we're going to go on a little bit closer so over here on the right hand side uh, there is a navigator button so it looks kind of like a, a steering wheel of a pirate ship uh, if you click that it's going to give you uh, this window and if you move this in and out you can zoom in and out using this um, i usually use this quite a bit because uh, it's just a little bit easier um, so zoom in just a little bit we're gonna put a couple more guides, guys, really quick. Click and drag. We're gonna go all the way over and we're gonna go in about a quarter inch. There'll, there'll be a place to line it up on each side. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I consider this area the bleed area. If you don't know what bleed is, bleed means that it's extra um, artwork or color that goes all the way to the edge so that way when the cut happens there's no white lines or anything like that and we want it to have as much coverage as we can going around the edges of the sock when we sublimate so that's why I do single socks so uh, I better the chances of not getting that dreaded white line down the side of a sock all right so now that we have our guys we can go back over here to our navigator uh, go ahead and hit this button. You can just zoom back out. Okay, so we kind of have a full view of what we're going to be doing. All right, and now we can just start to design. Now, we're going to do a real simple one today, guys. And what we're going to do is actually just one even easier because I, I think this you can kind of just get creative with, guys. I'm just going to show you basically what to do. And the first thing we want to do is put some kind of a background. And um, on this one, I decided uh, to go to, let me find Unsplash. Um, this site right here, it's called Unsplash. And uh, if you go to Unsplash, um, it uh, has royalty-free creative common photos you can use in your designs. So it's a great place to go. And what's also cool about Unsplash, if you use Affinity Designer, which I'll be going over in another uh, tutorial, you can actually access this whole entire site right through Affinity Designer. It's actually built into the program on iPad. Um, I believe also on the desktop, but it's super cool. So um, I found this image right here of this guy who's a cute little puppy and we're going to be cutting out his face and we're going to be, uh, so go ahead and download this. I think, I don't know which one this is. Anyway, there's plenty of dog faces on there. Just go ahead and go to Unsplash and search dog and you can kind of grab anything just to practice with. Okay. Um, and then I also needed, uh, let's see, I also need, needed some kind of field. I think a field would look kind of cool um, for the background and I like that one that one was kind of cool kind of like a dog can kind of be going in there and this also we can show some color correction in this one so this would be good so i'm going to download that one as well and we are going to bring them now into photoshop so go over here to file uh and if you go down to place embedded okay uh let's go over to my downloads folder where's my downloads folder oh, wrong downloads folder there you go um there are the two uh images first i want to download this one first which is the background because this is going to be the first layer uh again on layers think of it kind of like paper laying on top of each other each layer is a slice in that so um we want the bottom layer put down first usually is usually how it works so um this will come in it's going to be really small in the beginning guys but these are high resolution photos so you can just go ahead and expand it and the way i did that uh, grab the corner guys and if you hold down alt the alt key and drag the corner it will pro <laughs> let me say that seven times fast proportionally uh enlarge the image and scale it so we're going to just scale it up like that um i don't know if i like those rows we could probably just do something like oh, let's see we like that i like that that's kind of nice right okay now as you can see it's kind of uh there's kind of a cast on it right like it's kind of almost a little bit faded let's let's fix that a little bit so um right over here uh make sure that the layer is selected over here in the layers palette which is at the bottom right and then we're going to go over here to image on the top 
go to adjustments and we're going to bring up curves okay now curves is kind of like a brightness contrast but it's all built on this curve and as you can see if i go darker i can go lighter and what we're going to do is at the bottom there's three little eyedroppers this first eyedropper is for blacks and what I want to do is click on what I'm telling it is the darkest black in this image. And I'm going to click that right there and see how it automatically kind of uh, darkened up the right way. Now we're going to do the same for the whites. This is mid-tone, but I, I usually just use the black and the white eyedroppers. And I go to the white eyedropper and I want to bring it up a little bit. See, and now I got some more brightness. Actually, I'm going to go right there. That looks pretty good. That's a lot better. And now this is a good starting point. And I can even adjust it from here by grabbing that curve. Maybe I give a little bit more darkness because I want a little bit more saturation in this. A little more pop. We're going to give it a little more contrast. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. Okay, so this is going to be our starting point for the background. Okay, now we're going to add in the dog face. And so how are we going to do that? Well, um, I'm going to show you a pretty cool trick. All right. Um, that I think can be pretty helpful so um we're going to create a separate document and then load it in and by doing that it's going to create a smart object that you can just go to the other one and it will automatically update all the heads in this one now this is a trick i use in production so i can get through orders a lot faster so um this is a little bit of a looking over my shoulders kind of thing so um we're going to go over here we're going to create a new document and instead of it being four by five i'm going to just make it like a perfect square so i'm going to just make this 4.5 by 4.5 so keep it cmyk and we're going to hit create and this is going to make now a totally separate piece okay now um before we go any further go ahead and save this so we're going to save this um let's let's put this uh we'll put this on untitled folder is this no let me go Let's go over to the desktop. Let's go over. Let me throw this in a folder. So let me, where the sock one I just made. Uh, there we go. Okay, we're going to put it in here. Um, we're going to call this one dog face. Okay, now dog face is going to be loaded into the other one. Okay, and I'll show you how this is going to work here in two seconds. So now we have our dog face element and then we're going to load in that dog so go ahead and hit place embedded we're going to go over to that uh, downloaded picture we got off of unsplash and go ahead and hit place it's going to load it in now i'm just going to make this kind of as big as i can kind of get it because we're going to shrink it in the other document but first we're going to let's make it so it's easy to cut out all right now we have it here now what we want to do is cut his face out all right and we're going to be using the pen tool right here uh, if you click the pen tool which is uh gosh it's right, kind of right in the middle um this is going to bring up um where you're going to be clicking points and turning them to shape the face of the dog and what i mean by that is this uh, up here in the navigator let's zoom in a little bit because you're going to have to get kind of close because you want to make sure you get the best lines you can kind of get you don't have to be perfect with this guys it doesn't have to be automatically uh amazingly perfect this just tends to work the easiest for me so uh click the point uh you kind of when you click there and you drag you'll see this like kind of like bendy thing come out this shapes where how see how the lines are kind of changing so i'm just going up a little bit and then when i go over here and click again you'll see how it kind of curved a little bit and i pull it out a little bit so it kind of matches the area you see what I'm doing here? I'm kind of pushing and pulling to shape it. And as you can see, I can just kind of pull it out. It starts to shape. Boom. I can keep going around. And this is going to take a little bit of time. So I'm going to go ahead and keep doing this until I get all the way around the dog head. So again, you can just click in some areas. Some other areas you have to pull over so that you get a nice, a clean kind of curve. Um, like right here, if you click and pull, see how I could make it made a nice, nicer curve. I'll zoom in so you can see that. Um, see how it's kind of curving in and I can kind of bend it the right way. See how it's bending the way I need it to shape. 
and you want to this is going to take a little bit of practice guys but this is definitely a skill you'll want to uh, master at some point because this will make uh, compositing and doing other things later on much easier and so you know like i said i'm not going perfect over here guys with this there's another way to do this as well which is a quick selection tool um i might do that as well and show you a different way to do this too but i'm just going to go through this really quick Now, some of these I didn't go super close, and I'll tell you why. I'll do. I'm going to just clean it up. I just want to get through the tutorial a little bit faster. But okay, so once we have gone all the way around, you click on the original dot that you started with. Okay, and that closes this path. Um, if you zoom out just a little bit, you'll see that that's going to be the face that we're going to start with. We might adjust it a little bit when we get into the other document, but this is how we're going to start it off. So. Anyway, let's uh, go ahead and up here where the layers palette is, there's two more tabs. One, it says paths, click paths, and you'll see that there it is selected. And at the bottom of the paths menu, you'll see this little uh, kind of almost like a circle that looks like with dots. Click that and you see that the path now just turned, okay, into a selection. And that's what we want, all right? And now what we're gonna do is, um, First, let's, let's rasterize this. Okay, so to copy and paste, the layer has to be rasterized. And the way you do that is you right click it and go right up to rasterize layer right here. That will just flatten it down. And now I'll be able to cut and paste that guy out. So we're just gonna hit Control X or Apple X if you're on Apple. All right, and then Control V as in Victor uh, to paste it. And there's our little head and then Underneath, you see how there's like a new layer that got created? Click the old layer, and we're gonna click and drag this to the trash right there. We don't need that anymore. So now we have our dog head. All right, now we can adjust it from here a little bit. Um, I'm gonna just grab the eraser tool. We're just gonna do a little bit of cleanup really quick on this, guys. Uh, that works right there. Let's see. Um, if you right click it, you can adjust the hardness and the softness. I'm gonna give it a little bit more of a soft feel and slow it down a little bit, so. See how it kind of gives it a nice softened edge around there. So I'm, I'm just going to go around and kind of just give it a little bit of a soften. The reason I'm softening up these edges is that it's just going to blend better, guys, into the background that we made in that other document. Okay. So I'm good. Okay. Now I'm doing this all with the mouse, guys. I don't even have a pen on this. This is just super easy. So if you just have a regular mouse, you should be fine doing this. Um, so now we have that layer and as you see, it's its own layer down here. And what we wanna do is turn off, just turn off that eye right there, okay, on the bottom one. Now let's position this guy a little bit better. Um, that looks pretty good, okay. So now we have dog face. So let's hit file save, okay, and that's gonna save right back to that dog face PSD we made, okay. Now let's go back to that other file we started with which has the background right now as you can see over here in the layers palette you just have that first one we're going to load in that other dog face that we just made okay and that one where to go um let's see okay and there it is dog face right that's the one we want hit place and as you see brought in the dog face right now we probably don't want to do too many you know some people go over the top i like to just put in just a couple in there just to kind of make uh the statement that there's the dog you know and we could even add a stripe to this as well which we'll probably end up doing um, let's go on a little bit closer let's start placing this guy around so um as you can see the guides you want to kind of keep them towards the middle and away from the edge i could probably bring them just a little bit i think right there looks good I think that's a reasonable size. And now we got a nice dog face guy walking there. But I, I'm gonna add even a stripe to this. So we'll, we'll first, let's move this around. So over here on the layer palette, uh, you have your dog face layer. Let's click and drag that to the plus sign, which is next to the trash can. And that will make a new layer. Now you can just click and drag that layer. Make sure guys also, by the way, 
auto select is selected up here on the top while you have your selection tool. That way it's super easy just to grab whatever you need to and move it around. Um, now, you see how it kind of is facing the same way, it kind of has a weird feel. Um, sometimes I like to just flip them. So just grab the one that you want to work on, go up to edit and then over to transform and we're going to just flip it horizontal. Okay. So now you got cool dog faces now, right? All right. So let's take those or nudge them over with the keyboard a little bit. Uh, let's move this guy down just a little bit. And what we can do is select both of those by just holding down shift and clicking each one, like click one and then click the other and you'll see how it selected both of them. And then I'm going to click and drag those down and they're going to copy now and we're going to move them down, right? So now we're starting to get some socks. All right. Now these are going to be, um, nudge that over a little bit. And I might even do one more and then we'll just go from there. Okay. So this guy is all over the place. So now we can kind of move stuff around, kind of give them a little bit of a different kind of look. So these two are fine. This guy right here, let's, let's just hit control and T. And that will trans put it for transform. You can also use Apple T if you're on Apple. And it'll bring up those uh, sizing handles. If you go to the corner, see how the cursor turned to like, like a curve? That allows you to twist it. So now we can kind of start playing around with different ways so it doesn't look like it's all the same everywhere, you know? So let's do that. Double click it to set it. And actually we could even, you know what? Leave that transform up. Might want to shrink one of them. Give it some different scale too. You know, it's kind of like that. That's kind of cool. Kind of gives it a little bit more fun of a feel. Um, let's go over here. Let's shrink this guy down too. Let's make him smaller. And we'll make him kind of go all the way over here. Let's shrink him down a little bit. All right, um, that's looking pretty good. And then at the bottom here, I'm gonna just make this guy's head just kind of ridiculous big. So he's like coming at you almost. Uh, looks kind of cute. Let me get this guy up just a little bit. Actually, you know what I'm going to do is down here, we're just going to put the dog's name. We'll put the dog's face and let's uh, let's actually give him a little glow down here. So this guy right here, we're going to add a little effect around him, okay? Um, let's go over to uh, effects and we're going to give him an outer glow to make him just kind of give him a little pop. So this uh, window will pop up here, guys, and you have a color here. I'm just going to select white just to kind of give it a little bit more uh, pop. Um, I'm going to leave it at normal and then what I'm going to do is hit spread. We're going to make this a little bit bigger and then the size a little bit bigger. Let's see if we can get the opacity up and bring that spread down a little bit. So it's more of a glow. All right. So we got the dog's heads in here and, uh, actually I don't even know if we need a stripe. Do we need a stripe? I don't think so. I think we'll just leave it like this. I think this will be fine. Um, so there's our little guy. Let's maybe add one more head, kind of tiny over here on the top. I think it's missing something up here. So let's just shrink this guy really small, like he's up in the air. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, okay, so this is our dog sock. This is a crazy dog sock design, guys. But um, you'll be able to just get uh, creative with your own ideas, I think, with this. Um, <laughs> this one cracks me up. I don't know why. Um, anyway. Okay. So we have a crazy dog sock, right? And so we want to add just maybe a little name down here. So I'm going to put a name. Uh, let's go over here to the left, uh, go down to the font, uh, font, the, uh, type tool. Sorry about that guys. The type tool, um, let's go ahead and click somewhere here and we are going to, let's call him Bubba. Bubba sounds good. All right. So let's find a cool, uh, 
font for that. And if you go over here to the right, there is the font palette, the character palette. Um, and if you click it, you just start going through some fonts. Let's see what would work for Bubba. What's Bubba need here? What Bubba? I don't want to make. I don't want to be a horror film. Let's make it kind of cuter. Um, I don't know if people are gonna want. There's that's kind of a cute one. Let's do that one. We'll do Bubba with the. Uh, it's Andorra demo. I think you can get that at 1,000 fonts, guys. So we're gonna put Bubba right there. So Bubba has some socks. I'm gonna add a little drop shadow here. Just go to FX, guys, like he did before. This time we're gonna go to drop shadow at the very bottom. It's going to bring this up and let's just adjust the uh, distance here. So there's Bubba, Bubba Sparks right there. All right. And I think we got our dog sock. So let's back up a little bit. Okay. And that's going to be our Bubba dog sock. Oh, all right. So uh, I think we're looking pretty good. I'm going to just move him up maybe just a little bit. And let's move that up just a little bit. There you go. That's looking pretty good. So there's Bubba and a sock, all right guys? Um, so if you wanted to learn how to uh, see what this is actually gonna look on a pair of socks, um, save this now. And we're gonna put this in that same folder that we were working in, and we're gonna call this uh, custom dog face socks. All right, and we're gonna save that now. And now you have your master, okay? And uh, I have a way to, to mock up socks here. I'll do another video on how to do this, guys. Um, basically, it just it's gonna load in whatever I tell it to into this file. And this is kind of how the dog socks work too, um, where we're gonna be relinking the file. And as you can see, that's what the socks are gonna end up looking like when they're sublimated. So this way I can get a good idea of how this should end up looking here in the end. So, um, as you can see, I think these are gonna be pretty fun socks. Um, so let's print these out and we're gonna to go to the press and we're gonna see how they come out. Okay, uh, also guys, I, I totally forgot about this part. So um, also the reason why we did it the way we did it, remember how I made this separate dog face, is that now that we've built this, okay, and we've saved it, this is now a template actually. This makes it super easy so that if we get another dog face, so let's go grab another dog face really quick, guys. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Where are we at? Uh, let's go right here. Um, let's find another dog face. Let's go back to those dogs. Let's find another guy that we can do really quick. Uh, let's see. Let's see. I find one that would be an easy one to do really quick. <laughs> That's kind of a funny one. Uh, you know what? Let's do one of these guys. This guy has a cute little face. Let's download him. Okay, and uh, let's bring him in. And what we're gonna do is that we don't even have to deal with this one anymore, guys. Watch, we just go over here to dog face, right? And you see how we have your layers right here? We go to file, embed, right? And uh, we go to that one that we just downloaded, which is this guy. Let's load him in. Okay, let's get him in. Uh, remember, alt, and grab one of the handles, and pull out, and now kind of proportionally make him bigger, right? Let's find a good spot, let's place him. And then what we're gonna do is you go right click on the layer, rasterize layer, so he's able to be cut out, all right? Go over here to your pen tool on the left. Let's do a quick little uh, thing. I'll speed up the, um, the video for you. once again we've closed the entire path you go over here to the paths palette which is down by the layers palette click on that tab path click on that circle that looks like dots and it turns into a selection go back to the layers tab right and then all you're going to do is control x to cut it and then control v is in victor to paste it and there's our layer we can go back to the selection tool over here which is at the top left um, we can select that layer that was underneath that old layer, right? We can just throw that away. And then this layer that we have with the other face, we can just actually just turn that off, right? So now we have this new dog layer right here and we're gonna put him in the center. Let's maybe make him just a little bit bigger. So hit Control and T or Apple T, bring up the transform tool, go to one of these corners, hit Alt and you can make him proportionally bigger. 
So we're gonna put them about right there. I think that looks pretty good, right? And now just hit file and save. Now watch this magic, right? So now when I go back over to your other template, boom, you have a whole new dog face and you didn't have to do any more work. Isn't that pretty cool? All right, so this is how you build a template for like, let's say some custom dog socks. This could be anything, guys. I mean, think of ideas. This could be for kids, babies, uh, Father's Day, Mother's Day, Christmas, you name it. There's a ton of options. And this is a way to get through orders fast so that when the stuff comes in, you're basically just cutting out that face. This is, you already know it's connected to this other side and it loads it in. Now, just in case it doesn't come in right off the bat, the workaround is going uh, to any of these layers, okay, that have that smart object, right click it, and go to relink to file, because that's what it's actually doing. And then just click on that dog face and hit place and it'll automatically update everything. That is how you do it, guys. So let's go over, let's sublimate this stuff. Now, what I do, I print four of these out. So in other words, front and back of each sock. So there's two socks. They both have uh, front and back, so there's four copies that we need. We're gonna send this to the printer right now. Um, and uh, again, if you have not seen my other video, I'll put a link up here. Um, you want to make sure that your printer is properly set up with the right drivers from Epson, guys. If you're doing sublimation, this is for sublimation. Um, I'm gonna only make one copy, oh, actually four copies of this. Uh, go to print settings once you select your printer. Make sure that you select the proper um, one which should have a premium presentation mat, um, quality high. Um, and then over here on more options, I do a color correction uh, custom and we use ICM, okay? And that's basically what's in there. I'm gonna click it open again, oh, sorry and premium mat and okay and we're going to send it to the print all right so now we got our sock jigs over here like i said this is made out of eighth inch plywood i cut them uh four and a quarter uh by 18 inches and then sanded them down i did a little bit of a round corner as you can see on one of the sides so it's a little bit easier to get the sock on now when i'm putting on the sock i'm not putting it um, sideways I'm putting it like straight on so you can see there's the heel right in the middle so I have everything set up like basically how it's going to run on foot so once you have those all set up on the jigs like this make sure they're evened out as much as possible um, get some copy paper like this and put this at the top this is just basically blowout paper so that the top of the de sublimation design doesn't just blow out all over your wood and then possibly transfer onto another sock so just there for safety, guys. Okay, so now let's wrap the uh, sock. So basically, you get your uh, printed out design, which I'm getting right now, I believe. And I'll be coming back any second here. <laughs> here it is, guys. Um, so I take the design that we printed out. Um, I'm going to flip it over like that. And I'm going to put it right in the middle. I'm going to make it so that that bleed that I was talking about, that little extra, is coming over the sides a little bit, okay? So once it's right in the middle, I get my heat tape, okay? Um, I bend it perfectly and wrap it around the jig. So that way I'm getting that little bit of extra ink to get around this edge, okay? So fold it over like this. Uh, all I do is put a couple pieces of heat tape. I don't need to overdo it because um, you know basically it's already being held down pretty well. And once the press goes down, it's gonna be fine. So just making sure it's tight. Um, and then get it down. Now, uh, we just basically did it to the other one as well, same thing, and now we got it on the press. Um, I'm gonna slightly separate them just a little bit, uh, so there's a little bit of like a little bit of a canal there so the heat can get in the, the edges. Put a piece of blowout paper uh, to protect your press. Let's press it down. Now I'm doing this at 375 degrees for 80 seconds. Uh, that's usually what I do my sublimation. And boom, there you go, this is the first side. So once the first side's done and it's looking good, you gotta flip it on, on the other side. Now what I'm doing is basically pulling the sock inward, okay, so that the other side starts to come in. Can you see how the, the edge now has that printed sublimated side coming over? So that's gonna be your overlap and this is how you get that seamless 
uh, sock all the way around. We are not going to have the dreaded white line. So make sure you're seeing plenty of coverage on that edge and also on that edge. And even so, it comes over just a little bit, like maybe an eighth of an inch. Okay. So we're going to do it with the other sock really quick. And we're going to uh, put wrap them just like we just did on the other uh, socks. And then we're going to press them again. Remember, leave a little bit of a canal right there in the middle so that he can get on the edges. Uh, cover it up with some blowout paper. And again, 375 degrees for 80 seconds. So we press that down. Um, and let's take a look and see how they came out. All right. Uh, so there, it's going to be hot. I'm going to let you know. Uh, the, the wood boards will retain the heat for a little bit. So be careful. Don't burn yourself. But uh, you just pop it off, and there's our sock. There you go, guys. A perfectly seamless, all the way around, full color sock. Uh, this is on 100% poly, polyester sock. Uh, I got them off Amazon, I believe. And that's the result, guys. Look how good it looks. You know, nice, vibrant colors, really popping. And All right, guys, so now you know how to make socks, custom dog socks. Now, you don't have to just use dog faces. You know, you can use people. You can use cats. Uh whatever other animal you might want to use or whatever kind of idea you can come up with with customization okay now these are what they ended up looking like guys as i said um that jig the reason i was telling you to kind of squish it around is because you don't want that dreaded white line see how it's not going to get that white line now it's just perfectly seamless all the way around that's what you're aiming for when i first started doing socks no guys i made mistakes too and there was a white line here that took me forever to figure out how to work, even with the jig. The trick is to move the sock around. You want the sock stretch as much as possible. That's why you want that 4.25 width at least. And it also helps so that when the stretch is out, it doesn't lose the design. See, even right there, you're gonna start seeing white a little bit, okay? There are different sublimations, uh, socks that you can get black on the inside. Those are great for something like this. That would be good too. But usually this works out fine, especially if you got a good stretch on the jig. So anyway, there you go, guys. You have your custom dog socks. Uh, next design, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to be doing it in Affinity Designer on my iPad next. Um, and hopefully this helped you guys out. If it did, hit the like and subscribe, guys. Again, always helps us know what kind of content you like. Also, don't forget to join up at Heat Press Creators over on Facebook where we go over how to make merchandise with your artwork. Now, I'm also gonna be doing another series on NFTs. If you don't know what an NFT is, check out this video here. Um, if you are a designer or an artist that is making their own original artwork, okay? Definitely look into F NFTs and get your stuff online. I'm gonna be starting another group called NFT Creators that is specific to that whole thing because it's something that's moving quite fast. And I think people that are artists or photographers or musicians definitely should get uh, into looking into that, um, that, that, that whole new marketplace that's opening up, okay? So anyway, I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks again for plugging in and tuning in. I'm BC and we will see you later.